This is my first job in sports web series presented by SBR Net, your comprehensive source of sports data to the academic community. Here are the hosts of my first job in sports, Neil Schwartz and Mark Sullivan. Welcome to my first job in sports presented by SBR Net along with our friends from the Sports and Fitness Industry Association. I'm your host, Neil Schwartz, and I'm together with my co-host, Mark Sullivan. Mark, is it getting a little chilly up there? Yes, uh, you can tell Neil and I and our guests today are all in different climactic zones. Neil is enjoying uh, sunny Florida, (laughs) and our guests and I are uh, up here in the uh, fall uh, temperatures of uh, New Jersey. Yeah, both wearing, I see uh, hoodies or, or, you know, sweatshirts of some sort, and I'm wearing my usual uh, SBR neck golf shirt, Mark. So happy for you. (laughs) So, you know, before we get to our guest, I think I want to uh, explain a little bit about how we actually met this guest. Mark is, uh, you know, one of the principals in this group called the Sports Cohorts in in New Jersey, North Jersey, where Mark lives. And by the way, cohorts is spelled with a K, not the usual C. Yeah, we're, we're very clever, clever with a K too. Mark, explain a little bit about this group. And it's a networking group and a little bit about what you put together. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I sold, uh, I, I had a business that occupied me like 24-7 for years. And when I sold that business uh, in 2018, I all of a sudden had a little time to do all these things that, I had always talked about doing it. And one of them was in my little town in northern New Jersey, there are a bunch of people who work in the uh, sports industry, NFL, NBA, you know, high level marketing agencies. And we sort of formed a uh, networking group where mostly we get together and eat and drink, but uh, we have become a little more serious about trying to help each other and support one another in our business endeavors. And there is another gentleman up here by the name of Joe Favrito, super connected guy who has helped us a lot at uh, SBR Net. And uh, probably about a month or so ago, he had his own networking group and he merged his networking group with ours for a night. And that's where we met our first guest today. And uh, you know, what can I say? It was the harmonic convergence of networking. And uh, Neil, I think you and I talked about how we always encourage young people to get out and network. It's it's good for us uh, for us old fogies to get out and network as well. You know what? Uh, you know, networking is a great tool, uh, really, to get out there, meet people. You know, kind of jump into the conversation and and really have an opportunity to meet people, and sometimes on a very different level. Which really brings us to how I met today's guest, Brandon Williams. Brandon was introduced to me by Joe Favorito. Uh, Brandon is uh, Global Director of Communications for Fanatics. Brandon, welcome to my first job in sports. Thanks so much for having me, guys. It's, uh, it's great to see a meeting from just a few weeks come full circle. Um, I think networking is you know, something we'll probably talk about throughout the course of this discussion um, and appreciate you, uh, you having me on. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people I've met with a beer in my right hand, uh, you know, in the industry. And that's definitely the way this happened. Brandon, why don't you give us a little bit about your background and uh, maybe start, you know, maybe from the beginning and then, you know, work your way up to where you are now. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and keep it uh, concise. And, you know, working <laughs> in communications, brevity is always so important to what we do. So I'll do my best. Um, so I was a 2008 graduate uh, of Penn State University. Um during my studies there, you know, I had known that communications, working in sports and communications and marketing was always going to be a, it was a passion of mine. It was something I wanted to pursue. I didn't know exactly where it would lead me to uh, after college. Um, My father has been at the same uh, radio station in New Jersey for 40 years. I've always been around kind of broadcast and journalism uh, in the communications world and, and have always been an avid sports fan Um, So I knew it was going to take me somewhere, you know, going more into the public relations and communications area. um, I didn't know I I would land there. Um, But upon, you know, when I was approaching graduation, I was thinking about what to do. I had some great internships under my belt. I worked with the Philadelphia Eagles um, at their training camp at Lehigh University when it was there. You guys will remember um, many years ago and and had a chance to work in their sponsorship, uh, activation area where we brought in a bunch of VIPs and it was the first real taste of networking in the industry. 
Uh, and then for my final, uh, actually, semester uh, at school, I did a, I did a semester-long internship with the Penn State Sports Marketing Department um, inside the athletics department. I worked for the, the AD of Marketing Communications. And when I got a chance to work for them, they were actually putting together their first PSL plan. So that would take you back to when PSLs were wow. Wow. something at the beginning. So I had some, you know, had met a lot of great people, you know, had some really good internships on my resume, but I didn't know exactly where that would get me to. Um, and I ended up through a family friend um, being introduced to a small boutique public relations firm named Taylor, um, about 75 to 80 employees. Um, they sort of had a, a sports entertainment lifestyle specialty uh, and really having no formal PR experience uh, under my belt. Uh, I interviewed for the job uh, and I was lucky enough to, to land it. And I graduated in May. I started in August um, in New York City. I would shortly move up to Jersey City and kind of really cut my teeth in, in the agency world of public relations with Taylor. Um, you know, everything from, you know, writing a press release, understanding, you know, how the actual pitching of media and interaction mm-hmm. with reporters works, um, you know, working events on behalf of clients, you know, the first taste of new business, everything kind of from that agency lens, um, you know, worked on some amazing clients for, from Pepsi um, to, uh, you know, to, to EA Sports and, and just had a really great experience there. Capital One was a client um, and realized it was like, you know, I think I can find myself in this world. You know, I love talking to people. I sort of, I know I was never in sales, but, you know, from the media relations side, you know, a different form of sales and how you sell a story in to a reporter. Um, having a chance to go kind of rub elbows and meet athletes and tell people, you know, I think on the second or third week I was there, we had done a, a media day with Troy Aikman and he's in the office and we had done a MasterCard event with LL Cool J and then he's in the office and, you know, everybody thought I had this great big job out of college. Um, you know, people that work on the agency side will, will chuckle at that because you realize what really goes into it and, and where you kind of stand in, in some of those things. But um, my first two years, it was an amazing place to really cut my teeth and gave me really that foundation for, you know, what this world was. And I was forever indebted to Taylor and have many great relationships that I still hold there. Um, but from that, you know, the same as I sort of was like, I want to go to Penn State to be with 40,000 kids. Um, you know, I had been looking around a little bit and, and another agency caught my eye and that was Edelman. Um, and that was, you know, if, if you guys know, kind of, they are probably one of the largest, they're, they're still a privately owned family run company, but one of the largest PR firms in the world. Um, and, I, and I made the jump and went over to Edelman. Uh, I spent a year working on the consumer team, um, and then I, I was actually found out when I was there, I didn't know this when I joined, that they actually had a dedicated sports practice uh, that at the time was called Matter. Uh, it since has been rebranded to UEG, but I interviewed internally for that job and had a chance to go down and, and, and join uh, the Edelman sports team and, and, and really kind of take on you know some more, I would say, leadership roles within the agency world, sort of going from sure. the day-to-day of just being kind of, you know, an account person and, and really laser focused on media relations and, and more tactical to then, you know, kind of coming into the world of, you know, overseeing an account, being a day-to-day for the client, um, you know, helping to manage projects start to finish, being involved more so in the new business process and trying to kind of bring revenue into the company. Um, and had an amazing run there. You know, had a chance to, to win the new business uh, that we had with the North Face. They were a first ever USSA sponsor. So when free skiing was a new sport to the Sochi Olympics, um, we helped North Face kind of get that sponsorship deal off the ground and, and all of the the, uh, the external storytelling wow. that went with that. And, and, you know, had a chance to do a lot on, on the Edelman side. Um, and then from the agency circuit, you know, the last stop was at Ketchum Sports and Entertainment. Um, in which I had a chance to, to work on a, an amazing program with Samsung and kind of was able to take some Olympics experience that I had with Edelman over, over to, to catch him, um, was, you know, with our Samsung client and their road to Rio lead up. And that would actually open the doors for my current venture. When I was at uh, KSC, I was uh, approached to join this company called Fanatics, which having worked in sports at this time for eight or seven or eight years, you know, had never really heard of Fanatics. 
So I said, let me learn more. Let me talk to some people. Um, realize that this company was becoming um, a consumer brand. They were going to be going from a real, really a North American e-commerce company to a global consumer brand. Um, and it was on the precipice and, and all of the things, the building blocks that were happening um, from a communication standpoint, what our, the world was going to be open to for us to go to go into it was super exciting. So I, I made the leap. I actually passed on going to the Rio to Rio for a month with our Samsung client in order to pursue this opportunity. And as I'm sure you can imagine, it's, it's been, it was an incredible decision uh, on my part. I've been at Fanatics for about five and a half years now. Um, and seeing uh, from, you know, from somebody that works um, in public relations and communications to, to sort of be able to shape a narrative for a company, not once, but twice, um, you know, from what we were doing every, you know, what we were doing from a merchandising and a vertical commerce and being this on-demand provider of licensed sports merchandise and really taking that whole industry by storm um, to now, you know, the present day of Fanatics in terms of being this real, this one-stop digital sports platform and all of the different verticals that, you know, we're getting involved in. Um, it's not every day you get to do, you know, you kind of have that agenda setting transformation within a company. Um, so it's been an amazing ride and I've had a chance to, to, to meet amazing people um, from, you know, all of, you know, 900 plus partners we have on the fanatic side uh, to athletes that we work with, to brands that we work with, to uh, incredible things we've done with other um, brands such as Uber and things like that. Just a, it has been an amazing ride and, um, you know, I'm very blessed to, to be where I am today for sure. Yeah, no, what a, a tremendous opportunity. So uh, let's st stay with Fanatics for a minute. So probably a lot of people out there listening to this or watching it know Fanatics. Like, oh, that's where I go and I buy my Los Angeles Dodgers t-shirt. So that's where I buy my Steelers jackets. But you talked a little bit about how Fanatics is in the process of becoming so much more than that. Can you elaborate a little bit on some of these new areas they've moved into? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, we, we were a company for about a decade that was rooted in, in transforming the licensed sports merchandise um, industry, you know, kind of going from one that was, it was, it was, it was a long lead time business. I think, you know, an event would happen, mm -hmm. it would be, you know, you have to place your orders nine, 12 months in advance. And, uh, you know, you hope that your guesses are right. The certain teams that are typically right. bad, they'll be bad. Certain players that are typically good, they'll be good. And if you miss, you're kind of stuck, you know, sitting on your hands. Um, so Michael Rubin, who is the founder, executive chairman, now the CEO, he kind of had this new vision for, for the way the world was shifting to this phone first, on-demand, real-time mentality across all industries. Um, licensed sports hadn't got there. So, you know, he was, you know pioneered this model we call vertical commerce. It's all about owning your own supply chain, having an incredible set of rights, being able to manufacture products on demand, kind of for, you know, ultimately in the heat of the moment when there's a big play or a championship or a player is traded or a record is broken, um, you know, fans, the, their first reaction, they high five their, you know, their person they're with, they text their friend, and then they're looking to go buy merchandise <laughs> to celebrate that occasion. So we kind of got that, you know, the licensed sports merchandise industry, you know, to that point and everything, you know, again, from a storytelling perspective had been so gratifying to educate, you know, the reporters and the masses and, and take these hour, hour and a half conversations of what we were really doing. And then the light bulb moment of, wow, I can really see it pay off. Um, and now, you know, it's a matter of, of looking across the, the, the entire sports ecosystem. You know, we have an incredible database of more than 80 million fans. We have um, incredible partnerships with more than 900 properties. We're a global brand um, and being able to now look at, you know, how do we really ignite this fan passion across their entire journey? Um, so it's, you know, there's things happening on the trading card side, as you see, and there's things happening with NFTs. We the majority owner of a company called Candy Digital um, that has an exclusive partnership with MLB and the Players Association. We're getting ready now you know, we'll have an incredible World Series assortment um, that's live in just a few days. Um, and then looking at things like, you know, what, what happens with, with sports betting and iGaming. So we're really looking at all the places that these you know, fans are across their digital sports journey and, you know, being the brand that is that is there with those fans. Brandon, I know Mark and I definitely want to hear more, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners also want to hear a little bit more about Fanatics because you're right. They are really taking 
you know, that world by storm. But, you know, the really the first and primary goal of my first job in sports is really to provide, you know, guidance and, and a little bit of, uh, you know, direction on how, you know, um, students that are in school today, whether they be juniors or seniors or grad students or whatever level they're at, you know, to really help them get and break into that first job in sports. But you said something really interesting. You talked about how you were able to leverage a relationship that you had or your parents had to get that first job. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Because I think that is, by the way, a great way that people can get their first job in sports. Yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, over the course of, I, I've had being home, being, you know, working predominantly remote, like a lot of people over the past 18, 19, 20 months, um, mm -hmm. you know, have had a chance to just talk to so many more people. I, I, I'm an, an, an alumni advisor for the Penn State Sports Business Conference. Um, it's an incredible program that, you know, it's student run program. I think they're in their third or fourth year now um, that they put, they put on an incredible, it was physical for one year. It's been virtual for two years, but utilizing the power of that Penn State alumni network to bring back people that work in sports business and really serve as a great resource for those students that are that are there pursuing jobs in that field. Um, but the network you talk about, I think it's the one word that probably, you know, your many of your guests will have shared. Just I think sports is such a it's it's a huge it's a huge um it's a huge business. But when you think about sports marketing, communications, public relations, right. there's a lot of crossover. Um, there's a lot of people that have worked for a team that have gone to a league that have gone to an agency that have gone, you know, in-house to an agency that have gone uh, to a brand. Um, and I think it's just the one resounding thing, especially in sports than any other business where the networking is just so important. But my first job, my first internship actually with the Eagles, it was through one of my fraternity brothers, uh, his, his sister, uh, worked for the Eagles in their marketing department. And it was one of those things that, you know, through a conversation with him, uh, a conversation with her, it was one of the, I think they took 20 rising seniors was who interned for the Eagles. So, you know, utilizing that relationship. And then, yeah, it was through, you know, my father has, has worked in sports in New Jersey, predominantly in, in the Jersey Shore, but we're only an hour and a half from the city. So there's a lot of connections around. Um, and they, a contact of his, a family friend of mine that I didn't even really know was in that industry when talking about, Hey, I'm getting ready to graduate and here's who I've worked for. And, you know, Hey, it was one of those, well, I have somebody who's involved in this company called Taylor. I had never heard about it. This was also, it's so crazy to think about, but what's happened with this digital world we live in, what's happened with social media, everything from whether you want to talk about apps or connections or the ease of buying goods, like just the ease of knowing about jobs or knowing that, you know, think about the amount of newsletters that come out now that have, you know, 30 huh. jobs in sports each week. Like that type of sure. stuff to me wasn't really, or I wasn't looking for it or it wasn't as easily at your disposal. So I just think it was almost like you were working a little harder than just to kind of see what was even out there. And it wasn't as in front of your face as it could be now. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a connection that if I never had, I probably would never have known about this company to be frank. Um, you know, I think I probably still would have found my way into this industry, but particularly, you know, with Taylor and then with, you know, this is sort of what I'm going to go out and do for, uh, you know, 12, 13 years and then into the future. Uh, I don't know if it would have been as, as, uh, as direct if I didn't have that connection. Yeah, well, I, I tell this to young people all the time because I think some people are like, oh, I don't want to use my mom and dad's friends to get a job, blah, blah, blah. That's ridiculous. Yes. Uh, here's here's sort of my, my little bit of wisdom. Connections are no good unless you use them. So if you have connections through your mother, your father, your brother, your fraternity brother, your, your sorority Speak sister, up. use it's them. And, and especially at the beginning. That's it's, the time to use them. It's amazing how many people are reluctant to speak up or just even mention it to somebody in passing because you just never know where there's like, you know, five degrees of separation and, you know, who, who knows? It, it, it really is. And, you know, things, you know, you'll, the Super, you know, we weren't there last year, but the Super Bowl is kind of like, I feel like that melting pot where, you know, the industry comes together and you could be, sure. you know, in a room and it's just, oh, I, you know, I, I used to work with so-and-so. He was my client when I was at X agency, you know, now this is my partner at the end. And it's just one of those things like they'll, it never goes out of style. You can always figure out something to do with it, whether it's for yourself or if it's for somebody else. Hey, you know, now I'm coming up on there. You know, there's, there's 
some students in college who are reaching out, trying to, you know, they're doing the proactive early read for summer internships. And I'm like, holy shit, these guys are, they're really thinking about this. And, you know, sure, I'm happy to lob, lob an email over to, you know, somebody at this league or somebody at this team. Um, and I think it's one of those things now is, is just maybe the pandemic has accelerated this just in terms of maybe people have had time for a quick 10, 15 minute call because they're at home more than they used to. And I do really, I, I am really so impressed with, you know, I think the future of just the workforce, the future of this industry, people that want to work in sports. Um, I've had a chance through Penn State to talk to a lot, like are, are, are really proactive in terms of reaching out um, and just, you know, hey, if you have 10 minutes and I'll, I'll, you know, people did it for me and it's one of those things you don't forget and, and I'll always try and right. go back and pay it forward. Yeah, you know, Mark and I have met an awful lot of students. Uh, Mark and I were up at Syracuse, our alma mater, a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I remember walking out of the Falk School, which is the school, um, you know, of sports management and sports business and sports analytics. And, and I remember turning to Mark and saying how impressed I was by so many of the students that want to get into the sports business. I mean, and they, and they come with amazing skills, Brandon, what are some of the skills that you picked up maybe at school or even, you know, in the agency experience that you found have really done well to help you advance your career? Yeah, it, it, it's a great question. And, um, you know, I feel, you know, the, the, the red thread that we always look for um, on our side are, you know, writing, um, writing and just, you know, the ability the natural, and it doesn't come to everybody, the natural ability to hold the conversation and brevity in talking with reporters. I feel like sure. the, the underlying, you know, media relations is something I did a lot early in my career, kind of had a pause and now I'm doing a lot again. And, and you know, the Rolodex of, of, of relationships that you can build, um, you know, contacts that you can maintain and that you can foster that can help you in one area or another, is something that will, will always be, will never do you a disservice. It will always be helpful. Sure. Um, and I think just, you know, from, from a writing standpoint, um, it's, it's another one of those things that uh, no matter what, you know, the ability to write and be, you know, whether it's a, a persuasive writer, a business writer, you know, you're writing, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, now we're talking social, a lot of the stuff that we do on the side is, you know, we're working with the social, uh, with our digital teams in terms of copy that's appropriate per channel. Um, so I think those two things um, are, are always so important. And then I think just the, the team working aspect, especially on the, on when I was on an agency, um, you know, you could be working on an account that had 20, 30 people on and the ability um, right. to work within that team to get things done under tight timelines um, was always so, so crucial. And then I think all, another thing that from the agency side that really taught me um, at, an, at an early stop was just the, the ability to, to have really strong time management because there are things that pop up, um, especially when you work in sports, especially work on a company like Fanatics. A lot of what we do is kind of, you know, I kind of equate it to like 80% short lead, 20% long lead or medium lead where you're trying to see program, you know, programs or projects out you know, two, three months. But a lot of what we do, you know, we're in the World Series right now. We're coming off the halfway point of NFL. We've just started the NBA and NHL seasons. There's so much happening right in front of us that you always, you know, to, to try and map out your day and say, this takes precedence, but to also be nimble to be able to pivot when something big happens. That overall kind of thread of time management was always so important. I think those could, those could never, you know, do you any harm. That's an excellent point. So, um, more big news coming up with Fanatics, right? Yeah, oh, there's always there's always news coming up. There's always news coming up with Fanatics. It could be whatever. whatever. <laughs> it seems like they are constantly reinventing themselves. It's like every few weeks, it seems there's a new puzzle piece that's getting added to the Fanatics. Yeah, it's a, you know the whole. Puzzle. It's, it's an incredibly exciting time. I mean, there's no doubt. I think when I you know started, we were 2,500 employees. We're we're 8,500 now. Um, wow. We had a, I want to say we were a 4.5 billion, you know, valuation. We're at, you know, we're at 18 billion now. We're in 40, you know, we have 40 offices. We're in 12 different countries. So the globalization of the business is really exciting. Um, 
you know, a colleague of mine is based in Manchester and, and the ability to kind of, you know, we really have this global storytelling um, sure. uh, initiative that we want to tell, you know, we want to tell great stories in the U.S. We want to tell great stories globally um, that that, you know, when I first joined wasn't the case. So seeing these pieces come together um, and just, you know, again, from where I sit, you know, we have, you know, when I first started, it was a lot of, you know, what we, we were selling in, you know. Get, let's get an hour with a reporter. Let's try and make them, you know, tell them why they have, you know, make them care. Tell them why they need to care. Sure. Um, and then, like I said, that light bulb moment went off. And I think I was telling you guys when, um, you know, when, when the calls come in, um, that's that's also as, you know, as rewarding. And, um, you know, sure. the fact that every, you know, the industry is, had taken notice. The general, you know, consumer, I think, is now the general sports fan is now taking notice because, you know, uh, how, how great of a job we've done on the merchandise side to now be able to open up those doors to these other, um, to these other areas is, is obviously incredibly exciting. Brandon, we've asked this one question to most of the guests and we said, if there was one course or one skill or one thing that you wish you had maybe paid a little bit more attention to while you were in college, is there something, you know, looking back on that? Yeah, you know, I always, I was, I was always good at English, not good at math, um, which I, I don't know if I would say for everybody. In communications, maybe you find yourself in that uh -huh. in that world a little bit more. Um, but I do think, like you know, so some more core things on the finance side. I think you know, I kind of got to where I needed to get to when we were, you know, more so on the agency side when you're overseeing, you know, some big budgets for clients, working closely with the accounting teams and with the, you right. know, with the finance teams. But I, I think you know. Having a little bit more on that side uh, would would have been helpful, um, but I, you know, I, I think um, that's probably what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I will second that emotion. Uh, Neil's probably heard me talk about this when I got a C in my sophomore statistics class, and I knew that was the last math class I would ever take. That was such an exciting moment for me <laughs> and such a happy moment. And what do I do now, years later? I spend all day looking at spreadsheets and numbers. So I'm, I'm with you, I should have I should have paid more you, attention and taken, taken more math classes. Exactly, exactly. You know, Brandon, you brought up a really interesting point though, and that is, you know, you, you, you talk to students and the one thing that you want them to really understand is, you know, how to write better, how to, you know, communicate better in terms of brevity and being able to get their point across. In fact, Mark sometimes wishes I would be a little bit more uh, brief or a little less verbose in the way I write and the way I communicate. So, you know, is, is that really something that you think that t the graduates, you know, looking to get into sports really need to be paying attention to? I think it's one thing that, that jumps off the page when you're, you know, some, I remember when I was on the agency side, there were, you know, part of the recruiting process would be a writing sample, um, submitting their, and, and it was one of those things that you could quickly tell this person has it, this person doesn't has it. And it's a skill you could come with that could really set you apart. Um, you know, when I, when I, like I said, I, I always thought I, you know, would consider myself a pretty good writer. Um, I didn't know anything about pitching media, doing that, but I felt like I always had those inner, those communication skills that, you know, I wasn't afraid to pick up the phone. Um, I think that's another thing for, for, you know, we rely a little bit too much uh, on texting and eat. like there's, there's still something about picking up the phone and having, you know, especially in this day and in, in this day and age where we have been apart for 20 months, you know, picking up the phone um, and having that conversation, you know, the ability to do that and not be scared to do that and be in, you know, be in a room with people and be comfortable um, I remember I gave, you know, I, I took some public speaking courses at Penn State that really helped me um, with that. I sure. think having a father on the radio for four years, uh, 40, 40, 40 years, um, <laughs> wow. I was always around it. And he was, you know, emceeing dinners or being the guest speaker at so-and-so. I was always around him in a public forum speaking and communicating with people. And I always kind of latched onto that. Um, so I do think it's something that, you know, not everybody has it, you know, but the ability to step outside of your comfort zone, um, to do things that you haven't done, um, you know, in a new business pitch to be the one that, you know, you want to be speaking, you want to be in that room. Um, it's, it's experience. I think, you know, it's, you only get it by, by kind of raising your hand, by putting yourself in sure. that situation. Um, so I do think that though, you know, it may sound, you know, writing, 
your communication skills, public speaking, they may sound like, oh, let me just check the box, but especially in this industry, it really sets you apart and you can tell somebody that's comfortable doing it and that's not. Um, and uh, I just think it's one of those, it's, it's one of those quick ticks that, 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 that can really help. Mark and I want to thank Brandon Williams, uh, Director of Global Communications for Fanatics. Brandon, we're not quite ready to let you go yet, but I wanted to make sure that we did get a chance to, you know, let you know how much we appreciate you coming on today. Brandon, if there was just a, you know, you had a chance to talk to a group of college seniors who were looking to get into the sports business and you had, let's say, two minutes to talk to them, go. Wow. Um, well, you know, what, what I would say is the the resources that are that are at everybody's fingertips now are, are so incredible. Um, and, and everybody always says, well, what can I do? What can I do to break in? Um, what can I, you know, how can I, how can I set myself apart? And, and really, I always say, be a sponge. I mean, consume, consume the media, consume the content, consume the, the storytelling of the area that you're trying to break into. I mean, there are so many, um, you know, from what publications like the Morning Brew and Front Office Sports uh, and The Athletic and, 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 you know, now my inbox is full of just morning briefings on here are, you know, if you have 10 minutes, here are the things you should know. Um, you know, when you come for an interview, come knowledgeable about that company or that industry. Don't just tell me, you know, don't just, just go on and say, well, I saw Fanatics is doing X, X, and X. It's great that you're researching the company. But know what else is happening inside of this industry. What other implications are happening across merchandise or trading cards or betting or another vertical that might have an impact on us? Um, and just really just there, it's so the, the ease of social media and, and the way that um, I think a lot of the publications that do a great job at condensed, concise storytelling um, just just consume it and, and, and be and be be passionate about it. Um, I think from a networking standpoint, we talked about it. I mean, LinkedIn is this unbelievable tool that, that is so sure. easy um, to be able to go out. And I do genuinely feel like the people in our industry want to help people come up and, and, and send a quick note or, or research what the connections are and see if you can make that ladder back to get to that person. Um, I know at a school like Penn State, there is, I'll talk specifically to sports, um, like I said, they do have this, it's a Penn State Sports Business Club, and they put on the Sports Business Conference. Become a member of that club. I was just talking to somebody a couple weeks ago um, who is going to be a junior at Penn State. And I said, hey, you know, I'm an alumni advisor here. You know, he had never heard about it. You know, go out and research. Uh, and, and, you know, it's been a long time since I was at school, but I know the, the resources that they provide from, from a professional networking um, and professional development standpoint are, are second to none. Um, so I think overall it's just like when you when you know what you want to do and also don't feel like the first job you take or the first internship you take, like that's what I got to do for the rest of my life. I mean, I've had a chance to, to move around within the industry, um, but there are people that have been at an agency for 25, 30 years. They've, 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 there's people that have been there that have left and have come back. So I think that don't think that, you know, whatever you're doing is all that you're ever going to do um, and know that there are other opportunities and, and don't be afraid to take those risks. I moved around, a, you know, three or four times in the first several years of my of my career. I've been lucky enough now to be a fanatic. This will you know, be my, my longest stop um, in almost six years this spring. But uh, I think don't be afraid and, and don't be afraid to take risks, um, but ultimately be a sponge, use the resources, use what you know, sort of social media and digital media um, have given have given you and, and go into the conversations that you're having knowledgeable about about the topic and about the subject at hand. I think that's a big that's a big kind of headline, because if you can have a conversation, if we can just kind of, you know, one on one and just kind of fire back and forth and you know, that person is is, is knowledgeable about what you're talking about, it just it, it makes it click. And I think it, it makes you um, makes you realize that person took the time and, and they're actually serious about this. I think that's great advice. I really do. I mean, you know, on our website, just to give us a little bit of a plug, you know, one of the things that we do is we offer a number of lists and directories about, you know, who, you know, who, who should they be following? Who should students be following on social media? What are the newsletters? Uh, Brandon, you bring up a great point that, 
you know, there's just so much information out there, not just about the, the company that maybe you're going to go to work for or want to go to work for, but about the industry in general. Exactly. So I think that's a great point. Hey, Mark and I want to thank Brandon Williams, uh, Director of Global Communications for uh, Fanatics. Great company. Mark and I have, have both have experience uh, at different levels and at different times. Uh, we want to thank, of course, our producer, Brad Maybe. Uh, and of course, I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers for tuning in uh, to my first job in sports. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of My First Job in Sports, presented by SBR Net. You can check out the video version on the SBR Net video corner on YouTube. You can also catch the audio version on all major podcast platforms. Just search for My First Job in Sports. My First Job in Sports is produced by Brad Maybe. You can connect with us on all social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, or check us out at sbrnet.com. Thank you for tuning in.